All right, I think we're going to be live in a minute, my man. I'm gonna go check the site just to make sure that they can see us or hear us. <laughs> um, have, have you ever did a whole webinar and like forgot to turn the microphone on? Not a whole one, no. <laughs> Maybe like a, a couple minutes. Not even, probably not even a couple minutes. I always ask, like the first thing I ask, can you guys hear me? I just kind of ask that to get some engagement as well, but it's like one of the first questions. Yeah, yeah, because it's possible you could be out there and they, they can not hear you. I see you got your good friend Justin Burns is in the house. Justin, let, let us know if you can hear us, by the way. Uh, Taisha is in the house. Thanks a lot, Taisha, for joining. Uh, do me a favor. We're doing a mic check. We're getting started. My man, uh, Ron, gentleman I just met, but this is a rock star, by the way. Um, Ron, where are you coming in from, my man? Atlanta. Hot Atlanta. 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 Are you actually from Atlanta? No, I'm from Queens, New York. Queens, New York. Oh my man. Yeah. Okay, I didn't. I didn't know that. See, I learn something new every day. Which cool. You're from Queens. You're from DC, right? Washington, DC, man. From right here in Washington, DC. I see some folks are joining on, and you know, as y'all are joining on, do us a favor. I see we got D Bowden. Hey, D Bowden. Rose Walker. It is always a pleasure. Thanks for joining. By the way, Bethany Collins. Hey, Bethany. Thanks a lot. Uh, Anisha's in the house. By the way, Ron. Anisha's in. Uh, Las Vegas and is doing some amazing things now. She's stepping into this uh, infopreneur, this entrepreneur, this this world of of sharing what she knows with folks. So Anisha, you're really in for a treat because Ron's not only someone that has talked the talk, not only walked the walk, but he's someone that teaches people every day that are just like you. What's up, Demi? Thanks a lot for joining. Um, do me a favor. Um, I'm gonna do a mic check, mic check, and make sure y'all can hear Ron. So Ron, can you do a mic check, mic check? Mic check, mic check. Okay, well, what happened to mic? <laughs> one, two, check? one, two. My mic sounds nice. Check one. I mean, I, oh, I thought you were showing your age. Man. You're showing your age now, man. <laughs> That's okay. I, you know, my son always says that, and I always remind my son that I made it, by the way. So <laughs> hopefully, he will make it to my age. <laughs> He's like, Dad, you got to stop saying that on there. It sounds so bad. You got to be like, check one, two, three, check, check. Yeah, I'm like, man, get out of here. But. It does work. So if you can hear Ron, do me a favor. Look right below the video. I just put number two, number two. That means that you can hear Ron. So do me a favor. Look right below the video and put number one, number two. That's a sign that you can hear Ron. And if you can hear me, let's put um, Shay, we hear you. And then we're going to go ahead and kick this thing off. Um, Ron, what are you going to be talking about tonight, my man? Or this morning or this evening or this afternoon, whatever time it is for folks that are watching. I don't know, man. I'm just here for the compliments. I'm just going to keep going with the introductions. <laughs> I think we're going to talk about webinars, right? Some of the stuff I'm doing with webinars. Yeah, yeah, ab absolutely. And I'm, I'm checking now. It looks like at least we can be seen out there, which is really good. Let me just let me do this right here. I'm going over. I'm hitting it. All right. Um, OK, someone said number two. They can hear you. Yvonne Southall, Fountain, um, Texas. Thanks a lot for joining. Okay, Rose said number two. Anisha said number two. Uh, Justin said, yo, he can hear us. All right. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and kick this off. What's up, Ngazi? You're from New York, New York. So nice they named it twice. I found out that that's where Ron's from as well, by the way. So, you know, a lot of New Yorkers, I'm sure, are in the house. So let me go ahead in a few minutes. I'm going to go ahead and hit this off. We're going to get started in just a few seconds. In five, four, uh oh, let's see. Where did it go? Five, four, three. Two, one. What's up, Kevin? Coach you well. We're kicking off. We're kicking off season two in just a second. Please go ahead and give a big standing check ovation check, check, for check. the one and the only Shay Brown. Every morning in Africa, a gazelle wakes up and it knows it must outrun the fastest lion or be killed and eaten. Also, every morning in Africa, a lion wakes up and knows it must outrun the slowest gazelle or it will starve to death. You've heard it before. It doesn't matter whether you're a lion or a gazelle. When the sun comes up, you better be what? You better be running. That's right. That's right. You better be running. Life is about meaning. And meaning is about service. Isn't that the reason why we're all here? Isn't that what we're all searching for? 2013, the Peak Performance Institute was created. 5,000 clients who we've helped turn their idea into a reality, their reality into a business, their business into a movement, impacting 5.7 million lives around the world. Imagine that! 
My name is Shay Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur, and welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Network, the world's largest organization for the well-being of an entrepreneur. And as we always say, our mission at the Happy Entrepreneur Network, our mission is to inspire, empower, and provide resources for the entrepreneur to live a balanced life and execute their vision for the people they were called to serve. And our mantra, you know, I love our belief. Everyone should have a belief statement. Our belief is the results that show up in your life are just as important as the results that show up in your bank account. With that being said, let's get started. All right, let's get started. Let me welcome everybody to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue focused late night show in the country, not because of me and certainly not because of Ron, but because of all of you, all of our entrepreneur, all of our entrepreneurs, our speakers, our authors, our coaches, our trainers, you, the professional development expert who gets up every single day with one mission and one mission only, and that is to make a difference in the world every single day. So we acknowledge you. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. For everyone that's joining on, do me a favor, look right below the video, look right below the video, and if you're joining on, just put, it's my time. It's my time. It's my time to be paid more for what I know than I can do. If that's you, look below the video and put, it's my time. If it's time for you to take your experience and your expertise and reduce your labor, take back your time, and use an online process to do that, then just look right below the video and put what? It's my time. You know what, Ron? For everyone listening right now, it's their time. For those folks that are hearing you for the very first time, Ron, say hello to the Happy Entrepreneur Tribe, specifically Angela Pitts, who's watching, and Stephanie Smith, who's watching right now as well. Say hello, my man. Hey, thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure to be here with you guys. Angela Pitts, that sounds familiar. I might have went to school with Angela Pitts. Uh, at least someone named Angela Pitts. But thanks for having me on, man. All this energy, 11 o'clock at night, man. How do you do it? Is it coffee? What, what's your secret? Well, you know, it depends on where you are in the world, by the way. I, I know you think it's 11 o'clock because you're on the East Coast, right? But if you're Sheila Reynolds, who may be watching right now, what's up, Alice Boswell? She just joined on. Sheila Reynolds is over in Germany, by the way. If, if you're like Karen, who's in Australia, she's just getting up as well. We got folks in the West Coast, East Coast, but you're absolutely correct. No matter what time you are in the world, morning, noon, even in the afternoon, for Ron, it's the afternoon. And, you know, the secret really is, is I get geared up for this, Ron. Um, this would be what I would call my life work, right? During the day, I go out there and I save the world. <laughs> and I get paid. And during this time, we, we really have a mission, Ron. I'm glad you add that. And, I, and our mission here, and that, this is very important, our mission is really to inspire and to empower and provide resources for the entrepreneur to live a balanced life and really execute their vision for the people they were called to serve. As they're tuning in right now, they have a vision for the people they were called to serve. In order to do that, it does take resources. You know, Ron, do you mind taking a moment and talking about maybe one of the challenges that, that entrepreneurs have really being paid more for what they know than they can do? Why is that this setback? They get all this experience, but yet, they're unable to translate that to solve someone else's problem and get paid. What's, what's been holding a number of folks back? Ah, I mean, I guess it depends on the person, right? There's a lot of things that could be holding people back. You know, some people don't really understand how valuable their knowledge and information is, so they don't really put it out there. They look at the people that they follow and they say, like, I can never be like this person. Who am I to, you know, teach this when this person is doing it better? But, you know, the thing is, like, you put your stuff out there and you'll find your own tribe. You'll build your own following because people will resonate with you and your story. So it's important to get your thing out there. They always say that um, every day that you don't get your information, your, your expertise, your knowledge, every day that you don't share that is a day that someone's going deprived of it. Someone who could use it doesn't get it. So you have a responsibility if you know how to do something and you can help people to uh, get your stuff out there and, and do the best you can with it. Absolutely. Thanks a lot for sharing, by the way. And I do want to welcome Julia Rogers, who's out there, by the way. Kevin Cochewell out there in Arkansas. Thanks so much for joining. You know, one of the things I like to do when I start off, and I see you, D. Boda, said, it's my time. I believe that. You got Malika out there, by the way. Malika's watching right now. What's up, Malika? You met her recently just at MemberCon, and she's out there. What's up, Malika? Thanks so much for joining. You're in for a full treat. You think you got a treat before. 
it's about to be on, by the way. But one of the things I like to do, if it's okay with you, Ron, I like to always start off, and I like to talk about the Champions Creed. I know you're, you're an athlete. Once you're an athlete, you're always an athlete, right? And, and my coach, many, many years ago when I first got started, he said, Shay, I want you to read this. I want this to really hold true to you. And, and I have. And, and I've read it for about 15 years almost straight, almost every day in good times and bad times. And I like to share it when we first start off these episodes because it means so much. It's called the Champion's Creed. And let me go ahead and share the Champion's Creed for those folks that are listening. What's up, Clara Sunshine? Thanks for joining. The Champion's Creed. And y'all read along with me. The Champion's Creed says, I'm not judged by the number of times I fail, but by the number of times I succeed. And the number of times I succeed is in direct proportion to the number of times I can fail and keep trying and keep trying and keep trying. You know, Ron, as you're looking, can you see those words? And I want everyone and I'm going to ask Ron if he'll do this. I want you to read those words back, Ron. And you, I want you to read along with Ron as he's doing this right now. All right. Go ahead and take it away. Ron. All right, cool. Champions Creed. I am not judged by the number of times I fail, but by the number of times I succeed. And the number of times I succeed is in direct proportion to the number of times I can fail and keep trying. And Champions keep trying. You got to you got to do the Puff Daddy remix. And keep trying. And keep trying. <laughs> and keep trying. You know, for those folks that are watching out there, I want you to encourage another entrepreneur. I want you to uplift another entrepreneur. I don't want you to do this for yourself. I want you to do it for them. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to look right below the video, look right below the video, and I want you to write these words. And then I'm going to ask Ron if he would share maybe a challenge. Now, you'll go online and you'll see that Ron's a rock star. I know it. You'll see that he's been on almost every news station there is. I get it. You'll understand he's a New York Times best-selling author. Yes, I didn't say an Amazon best-selling author because the clock ticked a certain time in a certain category. I'm talking about a New York Times best-seller. Nothing wrong with that, by the way. I'm just letting you know. But I'm going to ask him to share maybe a time he had a setback and what he did to overcome it so he can keep trying. But here's what I want you to do. Look right below the video. What's up, Katisha Patisse? Look right below the video. Look right below the video and write these words. You are a champion. Hashtag keep going. Just, just look. Someone out there right now has had a really good day and they got to be encouraged to keep going. And someone else out there, they've had some high highs and some low lows. It's been a roller coaster ride this whole month, but we want to encourage them to keep going because we're a happy entrepreneur tribe. We support each other. We love on each other. So I want you to write these words right below the video. What's up, Clinton McCoy? He was the cameraman. He was the guy out there with us at MemberCon, by the way. Go ahead and write this down. You are a champion. Hashtag keep trying. Just put you are a champion. Hashtag keep on trying. This is very important. And, you know, someone's going to read that and you're going to encourage them. You're going to inspire them. You're going to help them move forward. Now, maybe you heard those words and you got encouraged. That's good. But we're not going to just encourage you today. We're not going to just empower you today. Today, well, this is a money conversation. Ron's going to have a money conversation. All right. What's up, Iris? Thanks for joining. I see you, Sean Harris. Thanks for joining, by the way. I see you, Kat. She put, you are a champion. Hashtag keep going. Ron, um, you said I can ask you any question I want, so I am. <laughs> uh, tell us about a time that maybe you had a setback. And um, what was the lesson you learned that can be applied to the audience? And I do want to say hello to Ngazi. She put, you are a champion. Hashtag keep going. That's right. You don't have to get it right in life sometimes. You just got to get going. And tonight, this morning, this afternoon, whatever time it is for you, we're going to give you exactly what you need to keep trying and to get going and to make money online. This is the promise online using webinars. All right, Ron, take it away, my man. I feel like this is a job interview with the interview questions like, tell me about a time where you had a challenge. <laughs> A time where I had a challenge, uh, I had uh, some legal issues that came into play from a former partner and I had to pay a bunch of money on, on uh, lawyers and whatnot. And eventually we, we settled and I ended up selling a company to him and all that stuff. But what I did with those problems and that problem at the time was I created, I used it as a story for a webinar. And I ended up making over a million dollars off of that story 
that I, I just kind of told the whole story, how it went down. And I used that as the basis for my webinar and, and what I was teaching and how I had to kind of make a shift and what business model I went into. So that story. So you could take the uh, your hard times. They're worth money. Right. As long as you talk about how you rebounded from them, you could turn it into a great story for a webinar, for a video sales letter, for for a book you know, whatever you want to do to kind of inspire people, because it's not, you know, there's two ways to look at it, right? There's people that um, just focus on the problem. And then there's people that focus on just what can I do to move ahead so that this problem is so insignificant because of all the success that I'm having, you know, so that's the way you have to kind of look at things. You know, I love that focus on what you can do, not what you can't do. And, and I love how you frame that. It is so important for all my entrepreneurs out there. Be Jacqueline Jetter. Thanks a lot for joining. Chantel, Michelle, Jackson, it is always a pleasure. For all the folks that have shared that, I'm going to encourage you to hit the share button. Hit the share button because uh, Ron's going to share some information today. He's going to talk through not just a conversation. But he's going to walk you through how to make money online using webinars that's the promise that's what's going to take place and we have some very specific examples and if that's you and you know that you know what it's your time to be paid then i want you to pay very very close attention you know ron before we get started do you mind uh stepping back and just talk a little about how did you end up getting into just business in general we get into webinars but just business in general were you always in business or were you, is your story like like mine where i got laid off from corporate america and i would have stayed in corporate america in fact, I'd still be there right now, by the way. I never wanted to have a business. But my homies had a business. So I figured, look, if the homies going to have a business, I can take my service and go start a business. Until I ran out of money, by the way. And then I found out it's not that easy. It's just not that easy. But I'm just curious. Do you mind taking a moment and telling a little bit of, a little bit of, of your backstory as you're out there? B. Jacqueline Jetter says, focus on what you can do, not what you can't do. And that could be certainly one of the takeaways. For some of you, you may have tried webinars. You may have thought about it. You may have... Technology may have held you back. Trying to understand what to say may have held you back. Or maybe you've done it and you weren't able to attract anybody to your webinars. Or maybe nobody decided to let you solve the problem. Don't worry. Stay tuned because Ron's going to get into that. But first, I'm just going to find out a little bit about Ron and, and who he is. So, Ron, do you mind telling us a little bit about how you got into this? And I do want to say hello to Robert Antonio, who's on here now. Uh, Robert, we got to get my man Ron on to the Black CEO Morning Show. You're going to hear him throw down in a few minutes. He's super fantastic. Sakisha's out there. What's up, Sakisha? She's out in Florida, pharmacist, by the way, and also has a company called Marriage Can Win. And um, he's going to talk about webinars. I know they're just getting into broadcasting, by the way. And um, this does relate to broadcasting, does it not, Ron? And I know you'll talk about that later. Webinars, broadcasting, is, is they kind of similar? Or are you going to talk about a little bit of the differences a little later on? Broadcasting in terms of what, like well, television? Are, what do you mean? Well, some people are doing broadcasting and some people are doing webinars. They're two distinct different things. And I'm sure later when you talk about that, you'll mention that because some folks that are on here right now, they're doing like what I call a broadcast. They're going to a Zoom or something and they're talking to oh, anybody gotcha. that's listening. Whereas a webinar is a little, a little bit different. Is that correct? Uh, well, it can be. You can do a webinar via Zoom. You can do a webinar as a, a broadcast. You know, I do a lot of webinars as live broadcasts, but I show my, my screen. I show PowerPoint and stuff like that. So I'll come on and do the introduction. A lot of times I'll do the introduction as kind of like a live broadcast, and then I'll get into the the teaching part of it with just without any webcam or anything, and then I'll do the close with the webcam and the Q&A with a webcam. Oh, wow. Stuff okay. Like that. Right. See, so, see, broke that down. The so, so, Sakisha, you and Eric, it's Eric and Sakisha. Y'all should both pay close attention, by the way. What's up, Charlene Day? You're going to learn finally how to crack the code with webinars, by the way. Um, by yeah. the way, uh, Robert said you're already booked on the show. You just don't know it yet. Ha, <laughs> ha, let the cat <laughs> out the bag. Oh, my goodness. Okay. All, All right. right. Tell them a little about your backstory, and then we're going to kick this thing off. We're going to talk about how to make money. Um, if you're wondering who you should invite this evening, like when you share this, if your group works on commission, that means something that they do, whether they sell a product, sell a service, they're a speaker, they're an author, they're a coach, even network marketer, or maybe they're just someone to personal development, they'll be able to benefit tonight. So hit that share button, hit that share button. When you hit that share button, write these words, let's make money online with webinars. Ha <laughs> ha, just put that down. Let's make money online with webinars. It's time to make money. All right, Ron, I know I'm coming to you. I said it three times, but I'm coming to you now. If you're out there right now and you're thinking to yourself, it's my time to make money on webinars, 
here's what I want you to do. Um, we're going to use the hashtag, Steve. We're going to use the hashtag today. Hashtag money with webinars. That's the hashtag. And we're going to follow that. And we're going to do something special for you. So I want you to look right below the video. Look right below the video, Darlene. Look right below the video, Marita. Look right below the video and write these, write these words. Hashtag money with webinars. But you put hashtag money with webinars. That's a bat signal that you do webinars. That's a bat signal that you know what? Hmm, this is my time to make money with webinars. All right, Ron, tell us a little bit about how you got into this, if you would. Yeah, well, I was going to, uh, I was working on Wall Street. I've always been an entrepreneur, but um, ended up getting a job on Wall Street. My former basketball coach's sister worked there with J.P. Morgan, so she hooked me up. And um, I was going, I wanted to be a financial analyst. I was going for my MBA. I, I got that. I got my uh, chartered financial analyst degree, and I was all in on that. And, and um, a friend of mine in grad school got a job working for a company that sent emails out for cell phone contracts. So they were pretty much just spamming cell phone contracts for like AT&T and MCI at the time. This is like 2000. And he kind of introduced me to email marketing. And he was like, well, you know, I have this email list. Let's see if we can put some offers together. So he brought me in and then I kind of just fell in love with him. And just the thought of being able to just make money online, being able to make money from anywhere, from your laptop, uh, any, any location you're at, you know, just the freedom of it all. And I always sucked at sales. I was terrible at sales, but the concept of having the internet be your salesperson and do the sales for you was what really um, drove me to it. So I started this site called recipesecrets.net, which is a site about restaurant, restaurant recipes, basically was the niche, copycat restaurant recipes. Ended up getting a book deal for that and, um, you know, ended up getting a bunch of TV media attention and uh, sold over a million books, million and a half books, actually, and became a New York Times bestseller. And then I started teaching people, you know, what I did to get there. Basically, it's like a low hanging fruit. Like you do something, you could teach other people sure. to do the to do what you did. So that's how I really got into webinars and to teaching other people to uh, build an audience, teaching other people to get a book deal to, you know, all the things that I, I did to get publicity, all that type of stuff, teaching writers. You know, I, I love how, love how you share that. He's so humble, by the way. You know, I sold a million and a half books, you know, no big deal. Some folks be happy they can get 15 books sold out the back of their car, by the way. Um, that's a topic for another time, but it, it is a book that is on Amazon. You can go Google Ron Douglas. You'll see it right there on Amazon. And the focus now for this particular episode, the focus really is money with webinars. Malika put money with webinars. Darlene Shelton put hashtag money with, mer uh, with webinars. Matibo, hope I pronounced that correct, said hashtag money with webinars. Charlene Day said money with webinars. Angela Pitts, who might have went to school with you, we really don't know yet. She said it's I might have worked with her. It's either school or, or a former job. I had. There was an Angela Pitts. I don't know. Now, actually, grammar school, there was an Angela Pitts. <laughs> Give me a shout out if we went to a grammar school together in Queens. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. And so here's here's what I like to do, Ron. I, I like to, to slow down for a minute and then we'll speed up. I like to slow down, then we'll speed up. And just and you ain't slow down yet, bro. <laughs> I, what? What do you mean this is slow? You don't understand. This, I get, I'm excited because one of our beliefs here, uh, Ron, is that the results that show up in your life are just as important as the results that show up in your bank account. Let me say that again a little slower so you can get that. I want you all to hear very carefully one of our core values. The results that show up in your life are just as important as the results that show up in your bank account. So there's some conversations we have and our focus is 100% on making sure you get results in your life. And that's cool. That's cool. You need that. You need that balance. But then there's other times that it's about getting results in your bank account. And I know for some of you, it's not about having more money in the world. It's about having more meaning in the world. And isn't it so true that when you have more money, you can have more meaning? Isn't it true that when you make more income, that you can have more impact? And, and, and one of our beliefs is that we can certainly, we can serve 
and at the same time, we can make a dollar. Now, if you were from my neighborhood, you would say you can make a dollar and a difference at the same time. Isn't that what you want to do, really? You want to make a dollar, but you do want to make a difference at the same time. Our, our, our mantra, our core value for season two that we're on right now is hashtag serve so big. And we certainly believe that the person that out gives their competition out earns their competition. So Ron's going to talk about a strategy where you're able to give and you understand that the more you give, the more you earn. It's called the giver's economy. Let me say that again. Someone look right below the video. Look right below the video and write these words. I'm in the giver's economy. Let me say it again. I'm in the giver's economy. And here's what the giver's economy says. The person that out gives their competition out earns their competition. So we're having a, we're having a conversation today. Some of us going to be like, you might feel like, wow, I'm giving so much, Ron. You want me just to share all that I know? How crazy is that? They should pay first. Ron's going to break it down. He's the expert, not me. But I want you to hear where the heart's coming from. You have a heart to serve. And, and you're going to serve first. And then Ron's going to walk you through a process so you kind of understand that you can be paid on the other side. I see you, Treats Tire. Says I'm part of the giver's economy. I see you, Dormain. Thanks for joining, by the way. Gail Carter, I see you in the house. L.A. Randall, the I, that's my uncle. The I is in the house right now. Angela Pitts, I, she still told us she's, she's from Queens, by the way, but she put down, I'm in the giver's economy. So the reason I'm excited, Ron, the reason that I, I'm this way almost every evening, but right now it's because I know for some of you, in order for you to really execute the vision that was given to you, it takes resources. And sales helps you develop the resources necessary to support the vision that you have for the people you were called to serve. And you have a vision for yourself right now, Dormain. You have a vision for yourself. Everyone take a moment. And I want you to look in your notes right now, and I want you to take a note to yourself. What is the vision you have for yourself? Some of you have a vision to leave your nine to five. Well, Ron is going to share some strategies that can help you leave your nine to five if that's what you want to do. Some of you have a vision to be able to hire a cook to work for you and you don't want to have a cook in your life. That's cool. Some of you just want to pay your mortgage off right now and be debt free. Ron's going to walk through a strategy to do that so you pay attention, right? You pay attention. You write down what is your vision. And then others of you, you have a vision for your loved ones. So sales helps you develop the resources necessary to support the vision you have for your loved ones. I'm breaking this thing down as fast as I can, but I want you to hear me. And so you have a vision for your loved ones. My mom, Ron, I don't know if I told you this, my, Ron, my mom was sick. She was in the hospital for about 10 days, about three months ago. And I was blessed and fortunate that I could leave my job, which is <laughs> who I work for myself, right? It's my own job. Isn't that pretty cool? And the process could run and I could be there with mother dear and I could write a check to help out. And that, that felt really, really good. So some of you have a vision for your loved ones. You want to send your kids to a school of their choice. You want to be able to write a check for the causes you believe in. And this is what sales will do more specifically, making money online with webinars to do. It will help you do what? execute the vision you have for yourself and then last last put this down you put down a vision you have for yourself you want to hire a personal trainer go ahead hire that personal trainer <laughs> you have a vision for your loved ones you want to pay someone's health care insurance because they don't have it that's what that's your big give back and, and then some of you have a vision for the people you were called to serve and for you to serve them you've worked hard you've got the experience you've got the expertise but really they don't know you exist. And without them knowing you exist or being to hear from you, it makes it very difficult. And some of you right now are landlocked. That means you're within a four wall strategy. If you can't get there and they can't see you, it's not happening. Ron's going to break that thing down for us and it's going to make a huge difference. So here's what I like to do. Here's what I like to do right now. I like to go ahead and turn it over to Ron. And, and Ron, let me ask two questions first just to get you going and then you can take it from there, my man. I know that already. But let me ask two questions. Number one, what is the number one reason why a entrepreneur or a speaker, an author, a coach, a trainer, a network marketer, what's the number one reason why they should really master and understand how to use webinars to break through so they can get the resources in their business? I know that's a loaded question. It's a lot to try to pack, and I want you to pack the whole thing. But just for folks that are listening, why should they pay attention and why should they tune in? Yeah, webinars is the most effective sales tool 
for selling higher ticket items, $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 type items. It helps you shorten the sales cycle because with a good webinar presentation, you have the audience captive there and you can shorten the sales cycle to get them to know, like, and trust you to get them to understand why your product or service is the best to buy and to do it in an educational format where you have their complete attention and then you can have like a built-in urgency to take an action before the webinar ends. So it lets you have a platform to get to let people get to know you, let them kind of let you, you, you resonate with them and also to have that whole sales process condensed into like a 45 minute or an hour presentation to the point where at the end of that presentation, people are taking the desired action, whether they're buying your product, whether they're filling out an application for your services, whether they're scheduling a, a call with you, whatever the desired, desired uh, action is at the end of that, the webinar can do that for you. So the, the main thing is you want to create a webinar around a topic that your ideal customer would be interested in. Right. So what are, you think about your ideal customer, who do I want coming out the other end of that webinar? Who do I want buying my product? Who do I want filling out the application or scheduling a call? You, so you think about that and you think about what is the thing that will attract my ideal client into this webinar. And that's what you make the topic of your webinar. And then you can have the opportunity to teach, overcome their objections is a really powerful one. And you know, you mentioned earlier about, you know, giving away a lot of value. Well, with a webinar, you don't necessarily want to give away everything. You want to leave something because if they feel like, like they got everything from you, they might not, they, they might leave their feeling like they could just take that information and run with it and they don't need you anymore, right? So part of the, the training and the content of it is inspiring them to believe that they can do something, believe that what your the solution that you're offering is the thing for them and also overcoming their objections that they may have the re, you know so you make it a complete no-brainer that your product is the solution that they they really need or your service is the solution so that's basically the gist of it and why webinars work so well and why so many people do webinars webinars are everywhere when i first got started with webinars you know i had a, a buddy he used to have wednesday night when he was the only one doing webinars on Wednesday night. I used to have Thursday night. I was the only one doing webinars on Thursday night. Now you can find like, you know, a hundred webinars every night going on, you know, cause it's like a, a big thing, but it still works effectively, especially if you approach it the right way and you have the right, the right structure of your webinar and you, you know, let people get to know you. There's, there's other things you can do to lead up to the webinar and there's things you can do obviously after the webinar to follow up, but it's all, just plugging in the right pieces into the, the, the structure and into the framework. And then once you have that, it just comes down to, are you making a good offer? Are you targeting the right people? And um, are you believable? Do you have the credibility and the credentials to really, you know, can you really help people? Right. And is that expressed in your webinar? So those are some of the uh, components. We could dig deeper into it, but that, you know, just to answer your question, why webinars work so well. Well, let's just dig right into it. And before we dig into it, I want, if you're out there right now, Ron, with your permission, can they tell us, they can see you, Ron, and they can hear you, but you can't see them, and you can't hear them. And, and, and Ron's in the group. He's over at happyentrepreneurstribe.com. He's there. He's seeing the notes on my page. He's right there. Here's what I like to do, Ron. You're going to, I'm going to turn over you right now in a minute, and you're going to take it away and, and really walk us through this process. James Price, you're going to be glad you're here, by the way. He's going to walk us through this process on how to make money online with webinars, but first, I like for them to kind of have an idea what some of you do. And so here's what you can do. You have an opportunity right now to spotlight your business. No, you don't need a cash app. That won't be required. There's no Zelly needed tonight, <laughs> no credit card, lock up your checkbook. This is all about giving. It's all about giving. You look right below the video. Look right below the video. What's up, Takesha Ford? I see you. Look right below the video, and I want you to write these words. I help people dot, dot, dot. Or I help businesses dot, dot, dot. What's up, Jeannie Jones? We're at money time, baby. It's money time right now. So you look right below the video. So if I was Ron, I might put I help businesses create webinars that generate revenue online, right? Or uh, if you're out there, you might say I help women transform their lives so they can be more successful. 
I don't want you telling us today how many letters are behind your name. That's not going to be important. We don't want to know about your celebrity people. That's not important who you work with. What's most important is what problem do you solve in the world? How do you help people improve their life? How do you help businesses grow? So here's what you do. You look right below the video, look right below the video and write these words, I help businesses dot, 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 or I help people dot, dot, dot. And then underneath that, if you want to put your website, can they actually advertise their website, Ron? Would, would you be okay with that? They put their website or their Facebook page down there. Would you be okay sure. with that? Okay. Sure. Yeah, sure. Ask Ron for that because some people don't want. Some speakers like, oh no, I don't want to, don't want to give anything away. No, there's enough. One thing I like about Ron when I met him is he felt like, you know what? There's abundance for everybody. That no one is alone, and that there's enough for everyone to share. So after you put, I help people dot dot dot, or I help businesses dot dot dot. Then you can put your website. Now, if you're like, God, I don't even know what to say. Oh, my gosh, I'm a little nervous. Then you need to really pay attention. You need to really pay attention. Um, you, you need to pay attention like you've never listened before or like you've never seen it before because this is going to be a game changer. Okay. As they're doing that, Ron, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over to you, and I'm going to give it over to you for you to talk a little bit about what we need to do, how we need to do it so that we can make money online. But I got to address the elephant in the room. Here's the elephant in the room. Do people still make money online with webinars? No, seriously. Is that still happening? Yeah. I mean, every day I make money with webinars. See? Okay. <laughs> I, I asked the guy. I know it was on your mind. You're like, yeah. is it really happening? You might not know anyone. You might not have earned money yet online, but it's possible. Ron, I'm going to turn over you to break it down for us, my man. I tell you, webinars will make you lazy because <laughs> if you all you really need is a good presentation and a good offer, and then you could just keep pushing traffic to that webinar. And then the, the internet just kind of does the selling. Well, not the selling, but it delivers the product for you. So say, for instance, you have a, a program, you have uh, something you want to teach people how to do, like help them solve a problem. You can create an online course. You can package that together with like some tools and templates they can use. And, you know, maybe even some software you license that you give them the right to use or you know, you could put that together with some like a, a group, like some type of group access and then just have it online and then keep selling that through that webinar. Like you were saying earlier before we, we got on about uh, you asked me if I'm a morning person and I said, absolutely not. I like to, to wake up when I'm done sleeping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> absolutely. So, you know, just having that type of uh, business enables you to do that. So one of my businesses is I have my own webinar and I promote other people's webinars. So we'll set up a webinar swap. They'll promote me. I'll promote them. We both get paid and, you know, 90 minutes of our time and we're done and I can go get some ice cream or hang out with my kids or something. So it's the ultimate type of freedom business. So I'll, I'll run through. Uh, I wasn't sure what I was going to do with this. So I think it's best if I just run through a quick webinar outline. Okay. If okay. I share my screen here. Then we better share your screen. Let me know and I'll bring it up. Clark Garrison says, I help businesses expand their reach globally. He's on list. Now, I don't know if you know Clark Garrison, by the way. He's out there in Atlanta. You got to connect with him. He has Survival Radio Network. Great guy. Clark, if you guys haven't connected, I want to make sure you two connect. He's an amazing individual, by the way. Great business guy, by the way. Um, Angela Pitt says, I help people to look spectacular with eyewear customized for your face and personality. Angela, by the way, I already know. She's in Baltimore, by the way, in the Baltimore area, by the way. Thanks a lot for joining, Angela. Um, you want to make money online? You want to make money um, using webinars? You're at the right place at the right time. While he's getting his screen up, which is what he's doing, Darlene says, I help people lose fat, feel great, and earn income at the same time. Thanks a lot, D. Shelton, for sharing that. All right. Uh, let me know when you want me to show your screen, and I'm going to bring it up. Yeah. Yeah, can you share it? Oh, yeah, yep, hold up. I might be able to put you and that up there together. You know, I'm getting kind of fancy smancy on the ones and twos, my man, on the ones and twos, but just give me a second. And I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, I know, I know, I know. I'm, I'm still learning as I go. Okay, wait a minute. I think I'll just pull your screen up for full display. All right, there they go. They're looking at your screen all the way full time there. Let me put this on the side to give you a little more space down there. There you go. All right. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. What's up, Eric? Eric, you're still up, my man. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you, Ron. All right, cool. So this is just, just a basic structure of a webinar that I like to follow. Uh, 
And the first thing you want to think about, as I mentioned earlier, is just the, the topic for your webinar. So it's like, what's the desired action you want people to take? So for instance, if you're a realtor and you're looking to get new people who are selling their house, new sellers, right, to list their house, maybe you do a webinar about something that sellers that would be, you know, definitely be interested in, like how do you properly determine the value of your house? So how much is your house? house worth and some tricks to, you know, sell it for 40% more than you would have gotten. So, you know, maybe your webinar is around that topic, like how to sell your house. How do you properly evaluate the, your house and sell it for top value? Maybe that's your webinar. Right? I'm just coming off the top of the head here, right? But that would attract people. What type of people would that attract? People that are probably looking to sell a house and to get the most from it. So you attract those people in, and then you just like you use it as a, a teaching moment and then you can offer your services towards the end of your webinar and, and express how working with you would be the best thing for them to do. So one of the things I like to do with webinars is you can show people the hard way to do it, show people the difficult way to do something and then offer your solution as the easy way. So after they watch your, your content, they're saying to themselves, oh, that was great content, but I just don't want to do all that stuff myself. And then you hit them with, you know, hey, I'll do it for you or my team will do it for you. And then it's like a no brainer. And you tell them you get a great deal if you buy by the end of this webinar, if you you know, get in or apply by the end of this webinar or take a desired action, whatever that might be. So that's one approach you can uh, consider. So just a basic outline I wanted to give you guys, you know, you start out with the welcome. Uh, most important thing with the welcome is to kind of set the stage for what's to come. You want to capture their attention right away. You want to tell them, you know, why they should listen to you, why they, they, you know, how this benefits them, what's to come, what to look forward to. Tell them, turn off all distractions, give, give them about, give, give me about an hour of your time or 45 minutes or whatever it is. So you want to capture their attention and keep them there. If you have a host, that can introduce you that works well. I do a lot of uh, JV webinars, like joint ventures where other people will promote my webinar and the host will introduce me to his followers, right? So it works out well if they're really gracious about bigging you up as someone who really knows their stuff and kind of relays some of their credibility onto you. And that helps as a good first impression to break the ice with them. So you have your welcome, you have your, your introduction, you can introduce your, yourself as well. You want to keep these short and to the point and the hook and the big promise. So it's like you tell people, if you watch this webinar until the end, here's how it's going to benefit you. Here's the big promise. Here's what you're going to learn. Here's what you're going to be able to walk away with. So you want to hook them into watching the whole webinar, the story. So you jump into the story. A lot of times I like to use like a hero's journey type story where it relates to the problems that they're going through so they could see themselves in you they could see you on, along the same journey maybe you know if you're a realtor and that go back to that example you could talk about a, a time where you were you know selling your house and didn't know <laughs> when you're selling your first house and didn't know what to do and all the obstacles you faced and how you you know almost lost a lot of money or how you maybe maybe you did lose money and just tell a story and then then talk about your 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 breakthrough what happened that made you learn the process and and know better and, and be able to 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 do it the right way right so you have your your problem your, your journey your breakthrough and then you could have what you learn and then then your end result after that. So if you follow that that structure with your story and have it relate to something that they're currently going through, you know, you'll have their attention and, and they'll say, okay, they'll see themselves in you and want to follow the same path. Well, if you just come out and don't tell a story, like if you come out and just say, hey, I'm a New York Times bestselling author, been on all these TV shows, I made millions of dollars, yada, yada, yada. They can't really relate to you. They see that as, oh, that's great. But they don't really see themselves doing what you did because you're starting out at the top, you know, in your story. So you want to start out in a place that they can relate to and share a similar journey. So uh, social proof, social proof could be in the, the form of um, your results, 
uh, people that you've helped, video proof of uh, people giving you reviews and, and testimonials, but that's a key component of it. And just proof that what you're showing them actually works. So that's social proof. And then um, you have your, your agenda. So you could do that really quick right right up front with your you know initial start. And then you, then you get through the agenda. Sometimes I like to do the agenda right up front just to tell them what's coming. But in this, it has so, it as step six. So can I, can I ask a quick question? Sure. When, when you say, I'm bringing you back on live, there you go. So they, they can see you and they can see your notes on the side. When, okay. um, and I'll open up in a minute. When you say give them the agenda, um, and I, you're the expert. Um, is, is there something about webinars we have to wait so many people get there? So if they get the agenda, they're going to miss it. Because um, I was talking to someone recently. They said, oh, you know, I don't start my webinar until like, you know, it wasn't even a webinar. They broadcast like 15, 20 minutes because they're waiting for folks. I just want to get your thought on that because it looks like up front you're, you're doing some really key information. Are you worried about people missing something? Then I'm going to show the screen back so they can see, you know, what I'm referring to. But you see here, you guys welcome introduction and then you got the hook and the big promise and he might get into a little later on i'm sorry if i interrupt you kind of like how long are webinars are they 90 minutes like you said are they two hours how long should they be um, but i'll turn it back over to you especially folks that are really focused on a high ticket webinar a high ticket i'm going to define as you know at least a thousand dollars or more and i'll let you define what a high ticket is because that's not my area of expertise but i'm just thinking it's if it ain't a thousand dollars it's definitely not but um i'll let you define it so two-part question number one um, you know, for big ticket items, should you give people time to get on there? And then question number two, um, how long should webinars be? And I'll let you continue to go on so people, folks can get a sense of what you're going over. Right. Well, if you're, it really depends, right? If you're in a marketplace that's accustomed to getting webinars all the time and you're noticing they're coming on later and later, you want to do some things to try to get them on early. So one of the things I tell them to do is like, we're going to be giving away you know, some type of bonus or prize or, or something to within the first 10 minutes of the webinar. So you want to try to tell them, you say like, listen, you know, we have a, a pack, we're expecting a packed house for this webinar. So make sure you're on time. So you want to remind them to be on time. You want to remind them to put it on their calendar, all that stuff. But, you know, no matter what you do, you're, you're going to get some people trickling in, you know, 20 minutes into the presentation, 30 minutes in. And uh, that's OK. I mean, the people that are there are there, you know, the people that come in late, if you have a replay, they can catch the uh, the replay. I mean, I've had people come on webinars the last 10 minutes just for like the close and the Q&A and still buy. So it's like, you know, you never know with, with people. It's hard to, you know, judge what's going to happen. It, it depends on the market. It depends on uh, w what your uh, what your webinar is about. If they feel like it's something amazing that they really have to see, you know, you'll have people coming on on time. If they feel like it's just like, ah, I could, if they're indifferent towards your, your topic, Maybe they just show up, you know, 30 minutes in, stay for 10 minutes and leave. And, you know, and also a lot of times it depends on what you're up against, too, in terms of, you know, what's on TV and stuff like that. You know, if you're going against the, the season finale of uh, Orange is the New Black or something, you know, or, or you know, some type of or if you're going up against the Grammys, you know, you want to yeah. sometimes check what's going on, you know, when you schedule these webinars as well. But um Okay. What was the other question? How long the webinar should be? Yeah, because I'm, I'm going back to your. I know you're going over a format, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to show this to you one more time. Um, let me let me open it up the screen one more time. I give it full screen, and I know I'll let you continue. I I just want. I had two questions, so sorry, to jump in and interrupt you there, my man. Um, but he's giving you. Um, here are the most important sections of a successful webinar in sequential order. And the question I kind of asked him was to frame. The conversation we're having is this one of those ones where we're having a webinar at the end you know we're offering something for i don't know under 100 bucks um or is this a sequence for those folks out there that are, are really like you know they bring a lot of value and their program could be three grand or more um so can you just kind of frame the conversation to the type of um, uh, a sequ sequential order we're looking at or does it even matter Right. Well, it's a bunch of questions there. Uh, yeah. So question my, number one is, uh, what type of webinar are you are you sharing right now? What's the price range so we kind of understand? Number uh, two, uh, the sequential order you're given um, is this one of those ninety minute webinar, two hour webinars, just so we have some idea. Right. Those, this would be really about a ninety question. minute, about a ninety minute webinar. You know, I like to do uh, about ninety minutes. I like to get into the offer within the first 45 minutes or so or within the first hour 
and then have some time for Q&A and follow up or, you know, have some. So I'll have like an initial close within like 45 minutes and then I'll build up, build up, build up and have another close, you know, sometimes maybe like an hour and 15, hour and 30 minutes and then do like a Q&A. So, you know, some people, well, the thing is like you can look at your, when you start doing webinars, you can look at your webinar stats and it will tell you exactly when people drop off. It shows you like a trend line of, you know, when they came on, when they dropped off. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you're noticing at a certain point you have a lot of people dropping off, you know, maybe you should look at exactly what you're saying during that point. Like watch the replay, watch the recording and say, what was it I said during that point? A lot of times you'll get people dropping off because you start to, to pitch something. And they're like, oh, here comes the pitch. And they'll just kind of drop off. So, so what I like to do is I'll give them an agenda and then I'll do like a recap of the agenda and what's left to come. And I'll save some good stuff towards the end just to try to keep them on after the pitch to get a chance to you know, pitch again during that process so they don't just leave. So I say, hey, there's more to come. Stick with us. We're going to show you, you know, X, Y, Z still coming, that type of thing. Wow. So you, you're really – you're really sharing some of the secrets and the lessons that you learned over time. I mean, thanks a lot. For, I didn't know he was going to share that, man. Those are like, those are little nuances that folks don't know. Um, a number of folks, Ron, I'm going to go back to your secrets. They think, well, I went to this seminar and I learned this information with this coach. So I'm going to share up, show up and I'm going to share it with someone else and they're going to pay me. Or I've studied it and I got it. And they're just so focused on just what they're trying to teach that they're not paying attention to these little nuances. And as you're listening right now, if you go back and look at the last 30 days and you look at how much revenue you generated online through webinars and webinars right now is defined as a live webinar. I mean, he hadn't had made a distinction if it's live or automated, right? So let's just say it's a live webinar. It could be automated, but we're going to stick with live right now in the time that we have. And don't worry, but I'm going to actually come back and demonstrate this stuff, but man, I'm going to ask you that later. But, but um, it's a live webinar. He did indicate that it's 90 minutes. Now I'm going to go back to the sequence because you know, I didn't know he was going to release this. Seriously. I mean, it, we don't have a run sheet, right, Ron? There's no run sheet. He didn't give me a list of questions and said, Shay, you must ask me these five questions and don't go out this box. That's not what he did. He opened it up and said, I'm here to show them exactly how they can make money online with a webinar. So I'm going to step back, Ron, pull it back up, and I'm going to let you do what you do best, my man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't know I was going to show this either, to be honest with you, but I figured, you know, <laughs> Have people out there wondering about a, a webinar structure, and there's many ways to do it. There's no one way to do it, but this is if you're just getting started, this could be an outline for how you you do it, just to get started, kind of plug in the right the right pieces. And uh, I think I was at where was I at? Uh, I was you talking were, about you story. were talking about the story and why they're listening, and then you said yeah. you go over the agenda, like a recap of the agenda. Yeah, 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 and social proof also you could. You can use stories as social proof as well to show examples of clients that you, you've helped and tell their story. That's very powerful. Like, you know, this person came to me and, and they were struggling and they were in foreclosure or something. And then I helped them kind of, you know, get some initial financing and get out of foreclosure. And then we helped them get a, you know, we helped them get a second mortgage or whatever. However you help them. I'm just trying to stick with that real estate example. But there's so many ways you can do it. And you just tell their story about how, they were in a, a grave situation or they had a problem and how you solved it for them. So that's very powerful as a, a way of uh, also entertaining. You want to be entertaining, you want to be lively, you want to you know, tell entertaining stories and being real at the same time and letting people know that you're not just talking that stuff. You've actually, you know, walk the walk and have some client results to, to show for it. Uh, so yeah, so the agenda, I mentioned what I, what I do with that just to try to keep people's attention. I put some good stuff towards the end and I, I recap the agenda midway through to tell them, you know, here's what's still coming. So stick with this type of thing. Uh, and then you have your, uh, your content. So a lot of times with the content, you can just have uh, the goal that they're trying to get and then three objections, three reasons why they're not getting there, right? That could be your, your content, three, three reasons why you know, people three, try but three fail. Three reasons? So you have three reasons. I heard you say the word three. Right. You uh, do three. Let, me, let, me, let me ask two questions if, if I can. Um, I got to put the guy on the spot. It's not really on the spot. He's an expert. Um, so what are the three reasons why most people's webinars don't work and they don't make the money the way they should? Ha-ha! 
<laughs> See, I thought I'd address the elephant in the room. I don't know if that was a good question or not. But I'm thinking it myself. He says, hey, Shay, you got to address the three reasons why um, whatever you're trying to help them with doesn't work. So I said, well, let's ask Ron a question. If you have a question, by the way, you can might post it in the group right below video and maybe we'll ask the question. But Ron, what are three reasons why it doesn't work? And I know you mentioned it earlier, but I want you to do a recap and I want you to tune in. I want you to hit that share button right now. Hit that share button and say, Ron Douglas is teaching how to make money online with webinars just just hit just hit the share button if you hit it before you paid it forward to your facebook page pay it forward to another group pay it forward to a twitter page take that link and put it on instagram you have ron's permission ron said you can share this out this evening he's not holding back so ron i'm going to come back to you uh what's the re three reasons why a a a person that wants to be paid based on what they've learned or the expertise what's holding them back from really uh, making money online with webinars and then I'm gonna turn it back over to you man to go through these points these these points are golden I mean when I say golden the conversation right now is not what do you intellectually know and it's not what have you heard before maybe in some seminar or some coach told you the conversation this evening is how do I earn six figures plus online with webinars where I'm able to share my message with the world and get paid more for what I know than I can do. If that's you, look right below the video, look right below the video and put, it's time to be paid more for what I know than I can do. Let me say that again. Look right below the video. What's up, Alinda? Look right below the video. Kat said, Ron, this is great. Charlene said, you're doing wonderful, by the way. Um, Angela Pitt says, Ron, you make it sound like an awesome option. No, it's the real deal. He's walking it through. I know it seems simplistic, but my father used to say, if it's easy to do, it's easy not to do. Okay. And so most folks, it sounds easy, but it's not easy. So here's what I want you to do. Look right below the video and say, it's time for me to be paid more for what I know than I can do. All right, Ron, back over to you. I did ask the question, what are three things holding back entrepreneurs today from really being able to make money online using webinars. And then I'm gonna pull your, your points that you put back up. And I'm gonna suggest y'all write these down. Like really, Ron, they can, they can take, a, take a screenshot. All right, Ron, back over to you. Well, if I had to narrow it down to, to three points that I would say three points that make the webinar convert or, or not convert or make the webinar actually do what it's supposed to do. Uh, the first thing would, would be people just don't believe that they can do what you're telling them they'll be able to do, right? They just don't believe it. They just, you know, they might believe that you can do it. Maybe they believe your friends can do it, but they don't believe that they can do it. So they can't see themselves doing it, right? So I think that's the first thing. And you have to really, uh, we were talking about, when I, when I first met you the other day at uh, Justin's event, MemberCon, shout yeah. out to MemberCon, great event. Uh, we were talking about uh, future pacing. Mm -hmm. right. Future pacing is a, is a tactic where uh, you enable people to envision themselves doing something before they even buy it, right? Before they even invest in you, before they even get on the phone with you, whatever. They can see themselves doing it, and you phrase things and you set you, you frame things in a, in a certain way where you you're telling them that they're already doing it. So you you, you make them think that envision themselves already doing it, envision themselves already having the prize already. So, you know, after you've gotten your, your first client, here's what you can expect. You know, you're going to get this big check and all this type of stuff. So it's like that you talk in a way that they, that you frame it like after they've already achieved what they want to achieve. So that's one way you can do it. I mean, that's one of the main, that's like the main thing is like, can they see themselves actually doing it so showing examples of people they can relate to that are that are doing it uh making it seem easy enough mm -hmm. simplifying it to the point where they feel like they can they can do whatever it is you're trying to teach them so that's a, that's the main thing uh the second thing i would say is your offer right is your offer or is your offer something that they see right. a, a huge value in are they focused on the price of your offer or are they focused on the, the benefit that they're going to get from your offer? Right. We were talking um, at Justin's event about putting together offers and the uh, how you how you name things, how you how you brand things a certain way. So we were talking about like if you were selling an ebook, everybody has in mind how much an ebook should cost. 
So if you're selling an ebook, you're thinking, okay, maybe an ebook, how much did that cost? I don't know, 99 cents, uh, $10 max for an ebook. So if you're selling an ebook and you're charging, you know, $500 for it, you know, they're not going to buy that, right? I, you know, I, I have a lot of, a lot of money. If I have a lot of money in my pocket and I go to the vending machine and they're selling a 50 cent bag of chips for, for $2.75, you know, I'm going to pass because it's just not, uh, you know, it's not worth it. It's not a value to me. Even if I'm hungry, I'm like, ah, that's a ripple. So, so you have to look at how you name naming things. So if you think an online course, right, do you really want to sell an online course? Do, do, do you really want to, as a consumer, put yourself in their shoes? Do you really want to buy a thousand dollar online course? When you think online course, you might think, you know, 50 bucks, 200 bucks, maybe, maybe 500 bucks max. So if they're selling the online course for a thousand dollars, you're like, ah, you know, in the back of your mind, it's still an online course. So what you want to do is think about how you're naming stuff. So instead of calling it an online course, I would call it a program. And instead of just having information, I would include other stuff and package it together to make it more valuable. Right. So you add different things to it. Maybe you add some type of uh, group community group coaching element to it. Maybe you add some type of additional level of support to it or some type of software or tools and templates they could just plug in or some type of, you know, done for you element to that, you know, to make it um, seem more attractive. The more done for you stuff you could put into it, the higher your thing is going to convert at anyway, mm -hmm. right? Because people just want, they want, they don't want you to go fishing for them or teach them how to fish. They want the fish on a plate with some lemon you know, some oregano already prepared. I like that. That's good. You know what I mean? That's yeah. what they really want, right? They want the thing put on a plate for them. They don't want to learn how to fish themselves, really. They want you to just give it to them. So the more you can make it, like, done for you or the more you can make it automated or easy for them, the, the better it's going to be. Uh, and, and then, and so I that's the second thing. That one of the things Ron's doing, just real quick, is he's, he's really giving you a sneak peek, and I didn't know he's going to do this either, into the psychology a buyer's profiles. He's kind of, kind of, kind of peeling back the big black curtain, if I will. He's reaching to his treasure chest of secrets right now. He's kind of unleashing kind of the the psychology in the school of thought that you might not have been thinking about. It might not have been top of mind to you. And as you're listening right now, you're thinking, Ron, this is good. Ron, I'm getting some great nuggets. Do me a favor. Look right below the video and give Ron a little feedback. Say, Ron, you're doing a great job. Ron, this information is really helpful. Ron, we appreciate it. Just look right below the video. Look right below the video and say, Ron, this is good. Or Ron, thank you. Because he's going over and beyond what I thought he was going to do. So you better perk up right now, by the way. This is a time where you want to tune in, especially when he's walking you through kind of how to package a little bit about what you're selling. I thought he was going to just tell you about the webinars and how they work and, and the psychology. But he's now getting into the, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It might not be what you're saying. It might be what you're offering. Mm -hmm. Lee Wilson, what's going on? Iris, who was there, said, this is golden. This is golden. I'm going to turn it back over here. What's up, Herb Harris? I know Herbert Harris has been doing this for a number of years, man. We never stop learning. And you have the master at doing online webinars right now. I call him the master webinar money guru, right? Because he has this, this combination of things, this, this all combination together, by the way. Uh, Modidum says, Ron, this is good. Thank you, sir, by the way. Oh, man. All right, I'm Ron. just here for the compliments, bro. Just here for the compliments. Nah, nah, <laughs> nah, man. This, this is all you. When, when someone starts giving you their wisdom on how to actually sell it and how to package it, then I want to I want to recognize that he didn't have to do that. Lee Wilson said, hey, Ron, great job. Thanks. Angela Pitts, who does glasses, by the way, she does custom glasses. She's the only African-American designer of glasses that I know on the planet, says, Ron, thanks for sharing this awesome information that we're learning from right now. All right, Ron, nice. back over to you, man. I'm glad yeah. you made that so, point about the product, because most folks don't understand that. They just think, well, this green bottle is green and Ron had a green bottle and Ron said, buy my green bottle and everyone bought it for three thousand dollars so i'm gonna sell green bottles but they didn't understand that that ron not only had a green bottle but ron happened to supply the water that's going into the bottle and then ron happens to be teaching them about what's in the water that they're putting into their body and there's some other components that he's done if there was politics they would call it wraparound services by the way if it's someone like apple you walk into an apple store 
and, and Apple really own the manufacturers about 30% of the products in the freaking store. Everything else comes from somewhere else. Mm. And so, with that being said, James Price. What's up, James Price? James Price is an amazing individual, by the way, Ron. I got to connect you. Uh, does copiers and a lot of things across this country. He said, thank you, Ron. I appreciate everything you're sharing. High five to you. Darlene Shelton says, Ron, you're doing a great job. Thank you. I appreciate you. All right, Ron. That's my cue to shut up, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna turn it back over you because I want you to know what he's sharing with you. Because for some of you, you might have thought, "Whoa, it might have went over your head." No, no, no. Pay attention. Back over to you, Ron. All right. So, so the third thing, right? Mm -hmm. You asked me for three things. The third thing, <laughs> he I would say, he remembers. See, the guy is in tune. It's like it's, money. If I told him to ask something up, he remembers no shit. It wasn't two point five interest. It was this. All right, Ron, go ahead. That's that. That's that finance area I'm coming out. <laughs> Bro, you're killing me, man. <laughs> the third thing I would say is this. Um, are you at, you know, your clothes? Are you asking for the sale, right? Are you telling people what they need to do next? And are you confident about it, right? And it, it comes down to, do you believe in it yourself? Do you believe you have a solution for people? Do you believe, you know, what you're, you're offering them is actually going to do what it sells, says and they're going to benefit from it? Do you believe that they're going to be better off after, they buy your product, use your service, right? So if you really believe it, then your clothes, it will come across. That confidence will come across in your clothes when you're trying to close and when you're asking for the sale. Because in the back of your mind, you have, when, you, when you do the close, you can't be saying, like, I'm asking these people for money. You can't be nervous about it. You're, you're saying you're giving these people an opportunity to better themselves, to leave the webinar better than when they came on, to actually take it to another level, to get the solution, to actually change their life. So you have to look at it like that. And that's the kind of confidence you have to have when you ask them to take the desired action. Go here, sign up, fill out the application, whatever it is, uh, buy, buy now, go here and buy. You know, those are things you want to do. So you got to definitely ask for the sale, ask for it with confidence and really believe that, um, you know, it's worth far more than you're, you're charging. I like it. I like so. it. I know I'm going back to your list. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that. For many of you that was listening, you're like, whoa, he's talking to me. If this is you, then you pay close attention. All right, Ron, I'm going back. I know you got 12 points, man. So I won't, I won't, I'll try not to interrupt you again, my man. But this is just so freaking good. And you, know, right. you would spend maybe three days at a seminar and maybe get points one, two, and three. And they would promise the rest at some point. And right now, he's kind of walking you through step by step how to do it. Oh, he's fancy smancy. Now, look at him. He's fancy smancy. He got, oh, oh, right now. Oh, you guys are in for a treat. Ron is like reaching into his double double bag of goodies over here. Hmm, Ron, we're, we're falling along with you, my brother. Let me put this down at the bottom. We're falling along with you, my man. All right. Yeah. I'm well, going to turn it back over to you. Just a few points I wanted to, to bring up. Like I was on um, Home Shopping Network five times and I went through there five different episodes uh, selling my book on Home Shopping Network. And I, I went through their, their training and some of the stuff I learned about mm -hmm. webinars and it's just about you know selling to a live audience from um, Home Shopping Network. So uh, some of the things I learned, you know, you definitely want to have what's called, um, if you're selling, especially if you're selling, you know, information products or some type of coaching or something online, uh, each week. So people respond to scarcity and urgency. So I just tell you a story. Um, I was at home shopping network and I was talking to their director of, of marketing and I said to him like, Hey, you know, you guys are running live 24 hours a day in little like 12 or 15 minute segments all day long, 24 hours. And it's the craziest thing. They never take a break. And I was like, why don't you just take some of the recorded shows and then just play those back, some of the ones that did really well? And he said to me, we w wouldn't want to do that because they wouldn't have the same built-in scarcity and, and urgency to buy. Because if you look at Home Shopping Network, if you go back to it, they have this countdown clock, right? Uh, where's my mouse here? They have... Um, so they have a clock there, you know, two minutes, okay. eight seconds going down, and they have the number sold. So they tell you, like in this episode, I think we only had a thousand total to sell. So people see that going up, like, oh, it's only it's only this many left, and then they see the time. So it's like double urgency 
to, to jump in. So they want to have that effect going on every day, 24 hours a day, and every, every 12 minutes they have an urgency, a scarcity event. So what you can do online is, um, you know, if you have a webinar, you can do a live webinar maybe once a week. So a lot of times I'll have a webinar on Thursday. I'll promote the webinar on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, have the webinar on Thursday, and then I'll have the replay Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So I'll have a urgency to buy event during the webinar itself where I have different bonuses and things they can get or, or a lower price that they can get if they buy before the end, end of the webinar. And I'll also have on, during the replay process, I'll shut everything down on Sunday. And I was like, this, I'll tell them this offer is going away completely. So you'll have a lot of people that buy on that Sunday. And I'll say Sunday at midnight, they'll just jump in and buy because they have that fear of missing out. So it, it encourage people, encourages people to take action. So you can have an event like that every week going on. And um, just that alone can, can make a lot of money for yourself. So you know, KLT, no like and trust elements, different things you could put in the webinar to get people to know, like and trust you, uh, testimonials, uh, pictures of people you, you've helped, pictures of maybe your family, maybe kids, maybe pictures of you and your dog. You know, stuff like that generates a lot of, you know, lo no like and uh, trust type elements you can add to your webinar. I talked about future pacing already. Uh, talked about helping them envision success with the product. Uh, relatable examples. So when you present your your benefits and we present your um, your uh, case studies and stuff, you want people to be able to re relate to it. You want to anchor to well known things. So you could kind of piggyback off a of well known thing. So I talk about this example in one of my webinars about you know Tim Ferriss. Everybody knows Tim Ferriss, the four hour work week book. So I anchor to that to say like, listen, he reportedly sold 1.3 million books. I've sold 1.5 million books. So just by giving that example, it kind of positions me piggybacking off of his big fame to say, you know, here's where I'm at in comparison. So you want to compare yourself to things that are well known and kind of piggyback off of them to show how you compare. And that gives you kind of like that instant uh, credibility. I talked about the authority transfer. If you have a host that's hosting your webinar, you want them to to transfer their authority over to you or if you have a well-known you know somebody like Che maybe if Che was giving you a, a testimonial maybe you want to play that first if if uh, you know everybody knows who, who he is right so you would want to play that just to kind of have some of that credibility up front so to capture people's attention and, and have authority um, establishing a common enemy is a, is a big one too so what is the common enemy right so if you're if you're uh, in online marketing, right, and you're selling an online marketing related product, maybe the common enemy is people out there selling you scammy products that don't work. And then you position yourself as here's why it's different. So you can say, hey, I've been scammed, too. I've paid you know, a lot of money for products that didn't work. It wasn't necessarily your fault. It wasn't my fault. It's just people selling a lot of crap. Here's how my product's going to be different. So you want to have that a common enemy and then you want to kind of separate yourself from that common enemy. If you think about politicians they do this really well right just look at look back at the last two politicians right you had the last two presidents you had obama and trump they're completely different but their marketing was the same in terms of establishing a common enemy so look at obama i don't want to make this political but just this is factual right obama the common enemy were these uber wealthy people that weren't paying their fair share Right. And, and that were you know, the rich were the, the wealth gap, like the rich were getting richer, the poor were getting poorer and the, and the middle class, it was, the middle class was disappearing. And he's like, he's going to give back to the middle class. Right? He's going to like make them pay their fair share. So if you think about his campaign, that was the common enemy. Right. And, and people believe that. And the, and the other thing was change. We're going to change the way things are. So he, he ran on, on change. So if you look at, at Trump, his thing was his common enemy. He, as soon as he showed up for the press conference and announced it, he started talking about immigrants, right? Immigrants coming in, taking our jobs away, bringing drugs, bringing crime. I'm not saying if that's true or not. All I'm saying is that was his common enemy that he kind of, his people resonated with, his people that would vote for him. He was feeding into his base. He's going to make America great again. He's going to take it back to a time where they felt like, you know, they weren't 
being threatened. Their their livelihood, their the America that they knew wasn't being threatened, wasn't changing, wasn't it wasn't a progressive movement going on. You know, they were in control. So it's like, you know, that's the common enemy and people rallied around that. So people are always going to rally around a common enemy. So you just have to establish what is the common enemy for your marketplace. And if you can establish that, people will really, really kind of know, like and trust you and want to want to buy from you. Does that make sense, Chick? Yes, you're you're right online, man. That make that makes a hundred hundred percent sense. And I, I suggest a number of folks that are doing this right now. They're winging it. They're shooting from the hip. They're shooting from the lip. They're trying to be continuously, spontaneously brilliant. And guess what? As a result, they're missing some of these key points. You know what I mean? And hopefully, as, as he's doing this, you are taking photos. It's okay if they take photos of this, Ron. It's okay when you put that up if they take a sh- screenshot of it or something. Um, yep, because sure. he's telling you the key area. One of it was, what's the common enemy? I mean, okay. Yeah, he gave so Give me an industry. Give me an industry and I'll tell you a, a common enemy, maybe. Sure. So let's, let's, let's use the industry that's very, very important. Let's just say marketing online. See, I, I had to come back at him with marketing online because I want to know who the common enemy is, right? So you're someone and you're skeptical. You're like, well, I am, I teach people how to transform their lives. And I got a market online and it doesn't work for my industry. I'm, I'm using, so I'm saying someone that wants to market online that helps transform lives. I'll say that to help them uh, rebuild their mindset, to help them get back on track again. So that's one. Yeah, I mean, well, we kind of gave that example, right? The common enemy, one of the common enemies to that would be just, you know, people out there just trying to make a quick buck and not really acting in their best interest, just selling them crappy stuff. You know, people out there that are, that are posers that don't really have a solution that okay. they can use, but will take their money anyway. Yep, I remember, so I remember you saying thing. that. So let's, let's let's go with the person out there that that sells financial products and help people build wealth. So they don't really they're not a Series Six licensed person, but they're out there every day and they offer products and services to help someone create wealth, whether it's through insurance, whether it's budgeting, and they might be thinking, no, no, you don't understand. In my industry. You got to meet people face to face. In my industry, we've got to see them. They don't do that thing online. Uh, well, there's a lot of regulations with, with some of those industries as well. But yeah, I, like I mean, that. people, you can you can definitely have an online class for that as well, where you you help people. And the common enemy could potentially be uh, the the big the big uh, industries that are just trying to rape you with, with fees. Maybe like uh, the mutual fund industry, where they just you know, they don't even beat the, the, the averages. They don't beat the S&P, but they'll rape you with these, these large fees and you don't know what's going on and then you're not making any money. And then the market, it seems safe, but if the market drops, the mutual fund drops even more than the market. And if the market goes up, the mutual fund doesn't really get you that, that great of return. So they're really just kind of taking your money, just putting it in, lumping it in with everybody else's and earning fees off of, off of your money. So, I mean, it's one of the things you can do. You can also talk about... Um, you know, advisors that you could show examples. We were talking about the other night, uh, this guy, um, Kevin Garnett. Oh, Kevin yeah. Garnett, he lost like $100 million or something. He was suing like $80 million, I think it was, because yeah. he had a, a wealth advisor that advised him wrong, and the wealth advisor ended up you know, benefiting off of his money, and he ended up losing like $80 million. I think it was $80 million <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, that's crazy. Right, his, his greedy wealth advisor. It seems that that happens a lot, right, to these athletes especially i guess they don't read the contracts or read the the fine print and they end up uh getting screwed so you could talk about examples of you know, how people got screwed and then say listen and then you know make a big deal out of it like i can't believe that someone can do that to them and just separate yourself from that common enemy that's trying to uh and what, I, to get them. And what i admire most about what ron is doing here and he's positioned it very nicely his narrative sorry i dropped my phone his narrative is really right on the money because most times um, folks will try to train to use scare tactics. And that's not what Ron's doing here. And that's what I admire most. Ron's saying, look, there's a common enemy that everyone is kind of geared up towards. And, and you're there to help resolve that. A classic example would be the insurance agent that says, hey, you know, your house could burn down tomorrow and you have no insurance. Right. You know, I'm not saying that's a scare tactic. It could be a reality. Not not trying to say anything about insurance agents or, or people to sell insurance. But but instead of doing that, what Ron is saying, no, there's 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 a common enemy. 
is a mm-hmm. common enemy. Well, we were just talking about a common enemy of insurance. It's like they you don't read the fine print and they, they find a way not to pay your claim when it comes oh, down, oh my gosh. Down, down to it, right? So they're they're just trying to collect your money and find any reason not to pay your claim. So so we talked about that. I mean, your job is to know your marketplace, know your niche, know your customer, like the back of your hand, know what their fears are, know what their worries are, know what keeps them up at night. You know, you got to do your research on your particular market, know what their frustrations are, know what they've attempted to do and failed at, you know what they, they you know, don't want to do, know what they do want to do, know what their goals are, everything about your market you need to know and definitely uh, what the common enemy is. So. Moving on, you could talk about um, you want to you want to know what is the one thing just talking about uh, knowing your market. What is the one thing they need to believe to buy or to take the desired action? It just makes it a no brainer for them. And you can structure your webinar content around letting them know why your product service or, or whatever you're selling is fits that that one thing they need to believe. Right. So whatever your market is, like, I guess if it's make money online, they need to be able to believe that they're going to make money online. Or if it's uh, finance, they need to believe that their money is safe and it's going to be invested the right way and it's going to grow and appreciate over time and things like that. So you need to know what's the one thing they need to believe to make buying or taking the desired action that you want them to take just a complete no brainer. Uh, When I'm selling stuff, a lot of times I'll just give uh, (laughs) a. A coupon code up front. I'm not going to talk too much about that, but I found this strategy where you give a coupon code up front, but you don't necessarily tell them what the coupon applies to. You just say, listen, I want you to just jot down this coupon code. And towards the end of the presentation, I'm going to show you how to apply that coupon. And what that does is is that coupon is kind of burning a hole in their pocket. It creates an open <laughs> loop where they're like, OK, what am I going to oh, use? Yeah. They, they have to use that coupon. Right. You have a, my, my wife is like really good at saving money w- with coupons. So she'll go to a store just because she has a coupon. You know, not even you don't even she doesn't even need something at that store. But if she has a coupon and it's going to expire, she'll just go to that store just to use the, the coupon. So it's like the same effect with, with webinars. You you have them eagerly looking forward to you for you to sell them something just because they have that coupon code <laughs> up front. So it keeps them kind of hooked in. So that's one of the, you know, it, it, it doesn't work for every marketplace, but it's worked uh, really well for me selling stuff online. Uh, I talked about boosting the value of your offer with tools, templates, white label software, traffic bonuses, uh, done for you services. You can actually find service providers to do different services. You can outsource the done for you services. We used to have this website uh, setup service that we used to outsource. We'd charge like thousand dollars and outsource that thing for like 18 bucks, but people would, would be happy and they would get value from it. And if they were getting it done themselves, you know, they would have to pay a lot of money, but we had all, everything in place already. And all we had to do was just kind of transfer the site over from our server to theirs and boom, they had everything they need needed to have the entire funnel set up. So, and it, it only cost us 18 bucks to hire the VA just to transfer it from one domain to the next and make sure they, they had it. So you can think about what kind of done for you related service can you have your team do or can you um, easily outsource to uh, someone else to do. Uh, talk about uh, predetermined FAQs to address objections. So you want to have some FAQs in there that you kind of just say, hey, these are some of our frequently asked questions and make those strategically to address their objections up front. Whatever the conversations in their mind, why they shouldn't buy your product, use the FAQs to address that and kind of shoot down that that objection, take away that objection. Uh, We talk about phone sales. So if you're on, if you're selling people via the webinar or via VSL or whatever you're, you're selling, whatever you're using, whatever format, and you're trying to get people into an application or an into a, a to schedule a call. You want to big up your salesperson, the person that they're going to be speaking with, as someone that's really going to be in the best interest. Someone that's really kind of like a guru, like a hero, like someone that that they're going to benefit from talking to. You know, you don't want to just make them seem like that there's somebody that's just you know picking up the phone for you, like some type of receptionist. No, they have to be somebody. The more you can build them up the better your, your sales on the other end are going to be when they actually speak to them. And, uh, and I talked about, yeah, just you'll be surprised if you just do one live webinar 
a week and then just build steady leads into that webinar, generate traffic into that webinar, just kind of feed the machine how much it will impact your sales, your, your audience online, your leads for your business, whatever you're selling, just having one, if you just take 90 minutes a week and do a webinar, even you can even do like a, a recorded webinar where um, you, know, you just drive traffic to, but there's no better format to build your audience, I think, than a webinar. And the reason is people expect to register for a webinar, right? It's just an expectation. So it's not a, a big convincing job you have to do to get somebody to give their email address to register for a webinar. You know, people are really stingy with their email these days. So if you're building your list, you know, you have a webinar on a topic they really are into, it's not a, you don't even have to really sell it because they, they just expect that they have to give their, their email to be part of that event. Wow. So that's all I have, man. Uh, you, you know, you've, you've given a lot this evening. I mean, for those that don't know, right now, um, Ron's in overtime. He, he, played, he played ball, so he, get, he can get that right now. He's probably in triple, probably in triple overtime. His, his mind, he's probably in triple overtime. Ron, there's a couple things I'd like for you to do. One, um, I'd like for you to share with the audience maybe a, a gift or something that they can take away. That's number one for those folks that want to do that. So I want to give him a moment. Maybe he'll, he'll have a website or something that he can share with you. And then number two, Ron, I wonder if you'll come back and we'll do a deep dive. I mean, today you kind of gave us the structure, you gave us the, the template, and you kind of outlined it. And I'm going to ask him next time if he comes back and walk us through the whole webinar. And then some of you might say, wow, I, wanna, I, wanna, I need my webinar done. If that's you, you can connect with Ron right now. Um, no, no, I need to take a look at what I've done. Ron, two questions. Number one, will you come back? I have three questions, actually. Number one, will you come back? Number two, um, do you review other people's webinars? Um, is that something that your services do or do you actually do the webinars for them? And then number three, is there a gift or something that you can share that they can take away from this particular episode? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I do all those things. I mean, yes to all those questions. <laughs> uh, yeah, we do. Um, I'll be back. We definitely gonna get that on the calendar. I'd okay. love to Yay. come back. Yay! All right, he said Actually, yes. Yeah. I, I thought he would say yes, but I'm glad he did officially right. say yes. This 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 is a broadcast. That means it's recorded, Ron. I, mean, I know you're a man of your word, but it's recorded. Don't worry, we'll send the clip back to you. Yes, Jay, right. get it on the calendar. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we do webinar coaching and, and consulting, helping people with their webinars, helping people. You know, structure it so that it converts really well. And I'll actually give you guys, if you want, um, if you're interested in, in that, I have, uh, you can go to rondouglas.com forward slash strategy call. And we'll just, you know, give you some tips for free on a strategy call on how to best uh, structure your webinar. We'll listen. You know, each, each webinar is different, right? Each topic is different. So we'll, we'll listen to uh, what you're trying to sell and we'll tell you if you, you know, we think you can put together a really good webinar for it and if we can help you with that. So we'll give you a free strategy call if you're interested. RonDouglas.com forward slash strategy call for that. Ron, and say that website one more time. Someone put that website right below, please. Put that website right below. Give them the website one more time, please. Just my name, RonDouglas.com uh -huh. forward slash strategy call. All right. Ron does it forward slash strategy call and it doesn't matter what industry you're in you'll be able to share some tips and feedback that can help them is that correct yeah well yeah pretty much <laughs> okay now I, I just want to make sure because you know there's different folks at different places different spaces in their business some are very new some are very seasoned some have tried uh, it before uh so i guess my point is whether you're I a rookie always at this. Think of some, i can always think of some industries i wouldn't want to have a webinar for but yeah most of the most of the you know we can help you with tell you what show up thing, for the strategy call and ask your question it'll be a good uh, use of your time james price put it down for you put www.rondouglas.com forward slash strategy call forward slash strategy call right. with that being said ron um share your closing comments with those those folks out there that are listening i'm going to show one more time the complete list that you put together by the way i'm gonna do that right now and then i want you to share your closing comments and we're going to schedule time to bring you back so we can do a deep dive deep dive into doing webinars there's a lot of questions on their mind what webinars should they use what platform do you recommend do you charge for the webinar is the webinar free 
look, he can't get to everything in one call, but what he can do is you take the homework assignment, and I'm going to show it to him now, Ryan, while you give your, your closing comments in a second. You take the, con the information that he shared with you, which he gave you a 12-step formula right here, a 12-step formula. You start working on that. So when you show up for your strategy call, you can ask very specific questions, and Ron has already promised to share his best ideas on that call. So it's going to be a good use of your time. All right, Ron, what are your closing comments? They're looking at right now the 12-step outline that you put together. And thanks for sharing that. We appreciate it. Yeah, I could just say, you know, a lot of people out there just working really hard or maybe they have a, a job and they're doing this part-time and just trying to figure out a way to make it all happen. I would say all you really need is one good presentation, one good presentation with a good offer. And then you could just simplify everything and just drive a bunch of traffic to that one presentation. You know, you could be out here spinning your wheels with so many different things you need to do, right? You know, it tell you you need to blog, you need to live stream, you need to, you know, be everywhere doing everything. You need to podcast, you need to to write articles, you need to press releases, all this stuff you need to do. You can't do everything. You'll drive yourself crazy, right? But webinars I feel get right to the money right so you, you're getting right to the money you're getting right to the sales process and you could just make a lot of money just off of one good presentation and just simplify everything and just send a bunch of traffic there you're building your you're following you're building your audience because people are registering you're capturing those emails you're following up with people you can automate the entire process and just have one simplified thing where you don't have to work so darn hard <laughs> and, and, you know, spend the time enjoying life a bit because life is really short. Today is all we have, right? The present is all we have. So you definitely have to enjoy that, enjoy your family, enjoy your loved ones and, and try to enjoy the, the present and, and not really stress about the future so much. You know, how, how true is that? You know, they say tomorrow is not promised, but what they don't tell you is today ain't promised either, right? <laughs> so I just want you to know that. Forget tomorrow. Today is not promised. Ron, thank you for your time, man. Thank you for the, all that you do. Thank you for sharing your tips. And thank you for pouring out, man. I really appreciate it. This has been a money episode. There's some episodes that about encourage you, but this has been a money episode. So for everyone that's watching right now, I want you to look right below the video. Look right below the video. Let's give Ron a digital applause. Don't worry. I'll be contacting him and get back on his schedule very, very shortly. Let's give him a digital applause. How do we give him a digital applause? You look right below the video. You look right below the video and put thank you, Ron. You look right below the video and put incredible, Ron. You look right below the video and you jot these notes, all the digital note takers that are right on that digital board for the podcasters that may not be able to watch this right now, for the conference call folks that can't watch this, for those folks that might be watching the replay and everyone is watching it live, look right below the video and just put, Ron, we appreciate you. So Ron, uh, from the bottom of my heart, thanks, man. You're incredible. And what's most incredible about what you're doing is you're allowing us to reclaim our time, reclaim our life and make a bigger difference in the world. So with that being said, God bless you, man. We appreciate you. Uh, L.A. Bill Corr said, thank you so much. You are amazing. Uh -oh, and you, uh -oh, did I lose him? And you are incredible. Let me see here. Hold up. Uh, I don't know what happened there. Oh, did I lose you there, man? Yeah, I'm not sure what happened. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I was saying how wonderful you were, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you how great you were. And I said, uh, I think we might have lost him for a second, by the way. But here's the good note. He's back. Treats Tyler says, whoa, whoa, Ron. Angela Pitt's still in there, man. She's saying, thank you, Ron. She said, I'm not going nowhere. It's great information. No, it's over. It's over, Ron. I told you, Ron's in overtime, man. He's in triple overtime. That means he's been playing the whole game. <laughs> oh, but I love it. I love it. I love it. L.A. Belfort says, thank you so much. Uh, James Price said, thank you so much. Uh, Courtney, I mean, Malika Courtney, who you met, said, thank you so much, man. You're a rock, rock star. I appreciate you. God bless, man. I look forward to seeing you again soon. And for everyone that's watching, we appreciate all the comments. We appreciate you showing it, uh, sharing this. We appreciate your time. One of the things that we understand about Ron and about you at the Happy Entrepreneurs Tribe is you can always make more money. I promise you, you can always make more money but you can't make more time. And so Ron's taking time from his family. He's taking time from his wife. He's taking time from his business. He's taking time from his sleep. <laughs>
Mm-hmm. And he's here with us. So, Ron, again, thank you. And you, you the viewer, without you, there, there is no show. Without you, there is no tribe. Without you contributing your time, your talent, and your treasure is not possible. So I do want to say thank you for watching. Thank you for participating in the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue-focused late-night show in the country. With that being said, for those folks that are meeting me for the first time or hearing me for the first time, my name, by the way, is Shay Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone, and I promise you, I promise you from the bottom of my heart, we're going to make some good things happen. we connect again next time. God bless. And um, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye for now. Until our next episode, of course. And then it's going to be over again. It's going to be amazing. Go ahead and give a big standing ovation for the one and the only Shay Brown. And I'm here right now in this moment with none other than the one and only Dr. Willie Jolly. What's up, my friend? It's a privilege and a pleasure and a treat and a treasure to be in your presence. All right, Delator, we're going to get started. You ready, Delator? I'm ready, friend. You ready, Dr. Kinnett? Ready, you ready. Got, no, none other than Andy Harikas. And, and we have someone like a Dr. Sonia, who's a bad sister. All right, now, go ahead with your bad self. None other than the Kim Warren Martin. promise I made to my mom. I only did this message for one person, and that's my mom. This is for you, mom. Love you. My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, Woo-hoo! everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, check. Shay Brown. My check, my check. All I do is we, 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 no matter what. Got money on my mind, I can never get enough. And every time I step up in the building, everybody has no way. Yes. Yeah. And they stay there. Yeah!